Praise the Lord. I'm great to be back. I took two weeks off. You didn't notice. <laughs> See, I'm good. <laughs> Just arrived last night, okay, and I, if I fall down, okay, uh, because I've been traveling a lot and get jet lagged, <laughs> so excuse me. But uh, Tuesday, I fly off to Kuching again uh, to do the training for our new uh, pastor, the, uh, Pastor Patrick. Sister Taria, please stand. Uh, welcome, your family. Where, where is Elizabeth? Where, where? Yeah, okay, they are all there. They just came in. They dropped by, and I'm going there. <laughs> so I'll miss them. Okay, they came over to celebrate Raya. I'm going there to celebrate Raya. Okay, <laughs> so we are going there to uh, do the training for the new pastor that we have appointed, Pastor Arthur Presley. So and his uh, new leadership team. So this time, uh, it's a small team. I'm going with CH uh, only. Uh, that's two of us, and we're going to train for the whole day uh, on the theology of the church. Okay, so uh, it's a little bit more intense. So the team, I d we don't need all the cheerleaders and all that. We are just going there to do work. Okay, so two days, and we will spend our raya in Telagus. We we'll get the help of uh, Ramon to do our translation into Iban. Okay, so, uh, and also I prepared the book for them, uh, and Sister Bilong helped me translate the whole theology book into VM over the last whole month. You know, so, so honoured to have such uh, wonderful people that support the whole ministry and the uh, multiplication of the church and also the support for the uh, changeover of a new leadership. God bless the church there. This week is special. Do you know? <laughs> you got it. Hari Raya. <laughs> uh, this week is sports week. <laughs> we started yesterday. <laughs> How many of you are sportsmen? Can I have a wave? Only one. Uh? Ayo, a two. Okay, a few. Hey, what happened to the young people? Uh, okay, no hands. Okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. I think it's wonderful that we can gather together around sports because sports is a big thing in the world. It's a small thing in church because we don't talk about it. Uh, yeah, have you heard a sermon on sports? Not yet. Uh, today it will be the first one. <laughs> It's a small thing in church. It's small. But it's a big thing in the world. You know, we on the TV. I have a TV. I, had a <laughs> I seldom turn on. <laughs> the TV is still there. Uh, but when I turn on, it's either sports or news. These are the only two channels I watch. So sports is a very big thing for us. We want to keep up to date with what is happening in the world. We want to keep up to date with the best sportsmen in the world. And so... We have organized our church one month ago into four colors. And I think all of you have got a color. Who is blue? You are three on here. Uh, you are how to win like that? Uh, you how to, okay, 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 okay. Who is yellow? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Next week, uh, you have to wear your color shirt. Okay? Because we are giving out prizes next week. Okay, so if you are blue, please wear blue. If you don't know your... Uh, who is red? Who is red? Who is green? Who are those who don't know their color? <laughs> you, uh, uh, you don't know color? You wear black. <laughs> or white. Uh, black or white also can. Okay? But if you don't want to wear black or white, then find out what color you are. Yesterday, yesterday, Blue House won their first medal. Yay! I'm blue, I'm blue, 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 blue. I was on the plane and I won my medal. Oh, isn't it awesome? <laughs> I came down, I checked in, I carried my luggage and the message came in, did it, winner. 
Uh, you like that, isn't it? I mean, that's the way things ought to be. And I think, <laughs> let people do the work. Lah. Let people run the race. Huh? Because it's quite exciting, isn't it? This is called a partnership. <laughs> I eat, somebody else cook. It's partnership. Huh? <laughs> I mean, games are like, the kids also had, uh, had uh, games yesterday, right? Uh, 27 medals we gave out for the quits. <laughs> and there were 20 kids. <laughs> no, 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 not really. I, I don't know how many kids, but we gave out 27 medals. Eh? And this afternoon, 3 o'clock is badminton. Okay. Right, correct. Forum 19. Okay, so please be there to cheer your colour on. And if you lose, it's because you were not there. Okay? So, <laughs> we're going to there. I mean, this is once a year. Come on. Uh, we are all excited, aren't we? When everyone is celebrating Raya, we are having sports <laughs> week. <laughs> it's a big thing. You know, major events... We look at uh, Olympics, for example, major events. Uh, World Cup, another major. You know, I was thinking to myself, World Cup, I, I like soccer. I don't play soccer, but I like watching soccer. So maybe when World Cup finals is on, uh, we will screen it live here, if possible. Have a Coke, uh, have a popcorn again. <laughs> huh? I mean, if, if possible, I don't know whether we can get the rights or, you know, just a, a Astro connection. Uh. Because the last time I remember doing it was about probably 15, 20 years ago. And uh, they did it in my house. So I opened my house and, uh, and we had our, our big screen to watch uh, where we can uh, enjoy together friendship. I, I think this is part of uh, having buildings, uh, friend, friendship together. I love golf major. I love tennis majors. But you know, sports can be a career. Sports can be a business as well. Brands are advertised through sportsmen. Djokovic wears Uniqlo. Lawrence Chen wears Uniqlo. Ayo. <laughs> this is the only jacket that fits me, okay? Because uh, I'm, uh, I'm a Japanese size, <laughs> okay? Uh, all the all the Western ones, you know, I go for big sales, you know, all these sales overseas. I say, wow, I've got sales. Go there, try. I put my hand into the, the jacket and it covers all my fingers. <laughs> so this doesn't fit me. I'm the wrong size. So there are certain things that come out of sports. And business come out of sports. Entertainment. We, we watch. I, I go with my kids. I... I, I Go with my kids to watch F1. I went with my kids to watch uh, my uh, daughter to watch a footy match uh, uh, in Adelaide. You know, she bought the ticket. She said, Dad, you want to come with me? I said, sure. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, these are places of entertainment, very clean and good entertainment. Of course, entertainment like this can become a vice as well. You know, people go in there one bet on MU, the other bet on Liverpool, end up both get stressed out because somebody has to lose. And so entertainment, sports can become betting and gambling. And I think we need to look at it at a very clear perspective of why the church have sports, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you why. In Jesus' time, they didn't have soccer, didn't have badminton, <laughs> didn't have golf either, uh, didn't have go-kart. We are having go-kart for the first time. <laughs> and you know who is, who is arranging go-kart? Uh, uh, the the go-kart driver. The Edward, Edward, the go-kart driver. You know, you know, we didn't have go-kart in Jesus' time, but you know what? We had chariots. Same. Okay? Chariots. <laughs> with a horse in front and a guy riding behind. Same. Okay? This one a bit lower, right? A bit lower with a, with a gear stick. Uh, no gear stick. 
Hey, I haven't tried before. Uh, but I, I just enrolled for go-kart. Haven't tried before. Maybe I'll put the reverse gear and then I'll try. <laughs> okay? I mean, we, we must be part of this whole uh, week, huh? where I can say. But when I looked through, I was wondering where did sport start? It started with the first Olympic Games in 776 BC. I googled and I found out. I thought they did human race, they did chariots, chariots, they did wrestling, they did jumping, and uh, this and javelin. You know, those are things that they did very early in the time. And the first sports they had only one race for the whole day. The first Olympics had foot race. That's all. I think barefooted. Don't know whether they invented the shoes that time, but it was a foot race. You know. So when I went over to Italy and took a cruise. I, we stopped over at Olympia and we visited this stadium that was very uh, kept as an ornament because that was where Olympic started. And I think it's, it has got a long history. As old, the history is as old as Jesus himself. And when you look at the Bible, there are many things that the Bible speaks about, but the Bible doesn't speak about go kart. The Bible doesn't speak about badminton. But you know what the Bible speaks of? Runners. There's always a person running the race. You, is it familiar? Runners. I'm not talking today about shoes. You know, shoes are called runners, you know. Uh, creepers uh, with the tentacles coming out are called runners. Um, the cloth you put over your table, <laughs> it's called a runner. I'm not running, that, that's not a runner. <laughs> I'm talking about actual people that run. Okay, <laughs> Today I'm talking, I, I'm, not talk, I'm not talking about the God smugglers as well, you know, taking Bibles into a country. Those are runners. Or your, your business runner, you know, you are behind the scene and then you send somebody out to be a runner. Those are runners. I remember going to... Um, First time going to a race course in Malaysia. I, I was just curious to find out how people do race, race betting. You know, uh, I, I know there are a lot of horses running very fast. Uh, I, Australia uses greyhound to run. Here they use horse. So when my late father-in-law invited me to, uh, to go with him, I said, yeah, I want to go and see. I was utterly disappointed. You know why? Because he only watched the horse from the TV. This horse race finished, he went to the next TV, he watched another one. The whole, whole stadium was so big, the, the course was so grand. Go there and watch TV. I said, that's not my cup of tea. But he got so excited watching TV because his horse won. <laughs> means he got a bit richer. <coughs> but you know, the Bible talks about metaphors of running. And I want to share with you the first verse that I... Uh, getting the prize. What makes us a runner? What makes us a runner for Jesus? What makes us a runner? Our attire? Does our attire make us our runner? We come, we dress, shorts, the best shoes, all geared up, and we are called runners. Uh, I know some of us are like that. We can't run, but we got gaya. Because we say, gaya mesti ada. <laughs> tara, tara boleh lari pun tak paha. <laughs> Isn't it? Huh? So we, we, are, we are like that. Uh, what makes us a runner? Is it our attire? Is it our identity? Who we call ourselves about? So that's why sometimes many of the Christians are called hypocrites. Oh, you call yourself Christian. But what makes you a Christian? Is it what you wear that makes you a Christian? Is it the necklace around our neck with a cross in front of us, a big one? that makes us a Christian? Is it our attire? No, it's not our attire. 
But yet, attire is important because attire reflects what we believe. But it's not the only thing. We need a combination of things, isn't it? Because you can't ask an athlete. You, I mean, you, you can't go on the field waiting to do your 100 meter dash in your pajamas. Wrong attire. You know why? Because there, there will be too much friction. <laughs> Wind. You know, they, they even choose what type of material to use nowadays. The one that uh, has got a re least wind resistance so that they can do their 100 meters under 10 seconds. You wear your pajamas? 20 seconds. <laughs> sure, because a lot of extras. But I think when you look at the details of running, the first key element to be a runner for Jesus is the price. We run to get the price. And the scripture says, if you look on the screen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 25, it says, Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. <laughs> they do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So either we get a price or we get a crown. And nowadays, our price is a medal. So I bought, so the, the sports committee recommended to me to buy medals for all the winners of the games. And then they put up a requisition form and they bought 216 medals. I said, wow, why you need so many? Uh? I'm not doing Olympics. <laughs> they said, but this is life Olympics, <laughs> new life Olympics. <laughs> okay? But I think at the end of the day, we need, we need some area of focus. And so when we look at getting the prize, there is a vision that we have. And so for new life, what is deep down in our hearts is loving God, isn't it? And the expression of loving God is on the wall here in English and on the wall there in Chinese. How do we express our love for the Lord in bringing up people, building the church, and blessing the nation? And this is how we express our love. And so we must have a vision. There must be a goal in front of us. There must be a prize. If not, we will be aiming, we will be rather aimless in whatever we do. So the first thing is a good and clear vision. What are you running for? In your spiritual walk for the Lord, what are we aiming for? Is there an aim? Or we just go day by day and say, Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Will that be? <laughs> no, it's not enough. We need a vision. And what are we going towards? If you are a young couple with a young family, with one baby, what are you hoping for? Half a dozen. That's a good vision. <laughs> At least you add to church growth. <laughs> I mean, we must have something, isn't it? Something that drives us on. What is our spiritual motivation? Who is our spiritual motivation? Just attending church? No, that shouldn't be. There must be a higher motivation for us. Deep down inside, there must be a vacuum in our hearts and say, Lord, where are we going? The second area is train for fitness and skills. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the same verse, the second part, verse 25 to verse 27. And it says, And everyone who competes in games goes into strict training. Wow. Goes into strict training. They do it not to get a crown that will not last. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but yet, and yet we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like somebody running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. 
No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. I think it's a very sobering thought, isn't it? Especially for preachers like me. I give instruction to the church every week. If it's not here, it's somewhere else. I preach my heart out. And if I were to be disqualified at the end of the day, it's so sad, isn't it? And to stand up in front of you to share, I, I must have a clean and pure heart because I negate everything else if I come here and tell you one thing and do another thing. And so preaching becomes one of the hardest jobs in the world. Being an engineer, actually quite easy, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, a push button on here. Engineers, uh, repair machine. Break down, repair. Break down, repair. But you know, dealing with ourselves and dealing with our hard attitude, dealing with our temptations, dealing with our life is actually quite tough. And that's the journey we need to live. And so spiritual exercise, like Timothy says, is of small value. Oh no, sorry. Physical exercise is of small value. But spiritual exercise, which is godliness in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, is of great value to all of us. So we all need this form of exercise. And over the past three months, I had two very renowned speakers. One was Dr. Liu <laughs> uh, to teach on food and you. Where are you, Dr. Liu? Uh, Hari Raya holiday. Uh. <laughs> yeah, wasted his opportunity. I market for him, he's not around. <laughs> he took two sessions, he taught us how to eat. I mean, we all know how to eat, eh? but he taught us how to eat properly. <laughs> okay? What food to eat, what helps us in our daily living, etc. How not to grow too fat, how to be slim and look nice. Uh, and I, I think that's the way food... Then after that, I had one last session, then another awesome gentleman. He ripples with muscles. Uh, Joshua taught us how to exercise. Okay? Uh, but your clap hand now, your came or not? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, I'm still using the, the principles he's teaching today on that wall. Keep the shoulder blade in and up. Oh, I thought that was great exercise for my back and my neck and my whole backbone. I mean, that was only one of the nine. 11. <laughs> I don't know how many he taught. But he taught so many good ones. You know, so we need to keep fit. And I think sports, we do that. And gyms, we do that. We pay a lot of money to keep fit. I, I was in Australia and I sent my daughter to work and I pick her up from the railway station after work and she takes her gym bag to work. And right after work, she goes for a one, and a one hour gym and then have dinner with us. You know, they, they pay a lot for it. And I think at the end of the day, when you pay a lot for physical exercise, we need to exercise our spiritual health as well. Both go hand in hand. <coughs> Sports is something I like to do. I call myself a casual sportsman. I don't know whether there's such a category, but I just created it. A casual <laughs> sport, sportsman. You know, who love to do sports, but yet, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes it takes really too much time. You know, we, we really have to dig in. You know how they win the 100 meters? They, uh, they practice day and night. I saw one video of a Malaysian who was trained by a China uh, coach how to do that triple jump and all from the platform, from the swimming. You know, the, the, the girl that won our medals for us and do a dive into, she practices eight hours a day. I was thinking to myself, and then she got specific diets to eat because so that she remains slim and when you splash into the water, you don't splash too much. Out. <laughs> if not, you are no more aerodynamic shape. <laughs> okay? 
it's so it's so tough. It's so tough. But so I'm I'm only a casual sportsman. I I <laughs> I love sports because I think I can do certain things well. And I think you choose sports also like that. I have a ball sense. So I can hit the ball quite well. The only ball that I can't hit well is the stationary ball that is in the golf course. Okay? That's the hardest ball to hit. <laughs> okay? The rest, all the moving ones I can hit, but the stationary one cannot hit. Don't know why. Uh, but you know, that's the way we are wired. I am also good at geometry. You know, when it comes to angles, I know if you hit like this hard, that it comes back like this. So I like the game of squash. Because squash has got a lot of geometry in it. Which corner you hit, it, it reflects and it goes back to another corner. You know, so there's a lot of geometry. And I, and I like it because I choose something that I'm strong in. And I think you do that as well. So the sport that we choose is the thing that we want to do. And so does ministry. Some of us are good at collecting money. And so if you are good, let me know. I'll have you on for Mission Week. We have a skill and we have a talent. And all of us are like that. You know, silently everybody keep quiet, but you know, sometimes deep inside you have a skill. And, and sometimes the size doesn't matter. You may be tall, I recommend basketball. If you are short, I recommend you to be a jockey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or F1 driver. Uh, you know, all the F1 drivers are very small size because all the weight counts. If there's not enough, they put extra weights to balance up because all this is a very fine tuning. If you are slim, then go for marathon. If you are buff, go for 100 meters dash. You know, so there is a, a, a size. If you are big and clumsy, go for <laughs> sumo. Uh, we all got talent. We all got talent somewhere. And I think that's how it is. And I think in spiritual walk with the Lord, we bring with us <coughs> our talent. Where we go. Some are good at dancing. If you ask me to compete with Lin Lin, she'll be 10 and I'll be 1. Okay? Because I'm born with two left legs. But that's, that's different people. And I think we need to use our strength where we are. I used to play the piano, but I think many people play piano better than me. <laughs> so uh, that's why I call myself a uh, uh, casual sportsman. I started off with a very simple sport that is cheap. When my primary school car called Kanda Kondi. Have you heard of Kanda Kondi? <laughs> ah, digging, digging wood from the ground. Huh? Oh, you are. Ah, yeah, you are same age, lah. <laughs> the moment you identify with me, you are same age. We dig this. We dig a hole in the ground and we flip this small piece of wood out as far as we can with a long stick. And the idea is for the guy to throw back this stick uh, into that hole, and we we protect the hole. And as the small stick come back, we flip it away. And <laughs> when that happens, as far as it goes, we measure the points coming back with the long stick. You know, it's a very simple, <laughs> simple game. But nobody plays that now. Nowadays, everybody plays iPad. <laughs> oh, iPad games are more exciting than Kandakodi. <laughs> but that's the way it is. You know, the other game which I like because I'm good at target shooting. And geometry is a uh, rubber band and uh, soldiers, green soldiers. You know, you buy those packet of green soldiers, one ringgit, 40 of them. Okay, You 20, I 20. You hide your 20, I hide my 20. One packet of rubber band. And we shoot at each other's soldiers until who downs everything is the winner. And you know, at the end of the day, the rubber band snaps at my eye. So I got one line here, one line there, one line there, everywhere. Oh, broken up <laughs> the face. <laughs> I go back home to my mom. My mom said, what have you been doing? I said, I'm playing rubber band. Uh, but, but I'm good at whatever needs some accuracy. But you know, as we do that, 
we are challenged in our giftings, where we are and where our strength us is. I tried um, water skiing. Have you tried water skiing? You know, I, I tried hang gliding. You know, you run off the mountain and you have this uh, triangular uh, piece of cloth that you hang on to as you run and you take off from the uh, cliff. <laughs> But mine wasn't a cliff because I, I'm just learning how. So I run off a slope, you know. So as the slope goes down, I go up. And the wind catches me and I go backwards. Oh, I thought, whoa, so exciting. Then I fall over <laughs> because the wind blow too high, you know. And the same goes with uh, water skiing. You know, water skiing needs a special skill. I picked it up when I was studying in Australia. And I used to go to this pond that is heated a natural pond that is heated, you know. It is ne it's built next, the pond is located next to a power station. And the power station generates heat and throws heat into this pond so for cooling purpose. Okay. So we go into this pond to do water skiing. Oh, and I would sit in there with uh, my wetsuit, uh, with all the skills, uh, all the skis ready, and the boat will take the boat will, the, the speedboat will just take off. And as the speedboat takes off, I come out of the water uh, with, uh, with, the, with the skis, you know, oh, like pro. And then after that, the, the calf muscles, because I have to dig in to get my skis up, my calf muscles cramp, you know. So oh, after a while, you just cannot hold it any longer. You let go and you flip over the water because there's no other way of stopping except to flip over the water and suck, get <laughs> get drowned uh, in that water and then after that come out again, uh, hopefully alive, you know, <laughs> and uh, I, I love it, you know, so I, 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 I picked it up and enjoyed it and, uh, but you know, there is a skill involved, just that calf muscles are the only things that keep me uh, strong above the water and I think same with our Christian walk, there are certain practices that we need to do to keep us healthy spiritually. And one of it is reading, writing, listening to the Lord. Opening your Bible, it seems very mundane. But you know, you can open your Bible, you can spend just 10, 15 minutes, and that builds your faith, your spiritual exercise for the day. And so sports actually tell us a lot about our lessons in life. We can, we can link it up to what we want to do. And so over the last one month, I had Dr. Tony Lim come in and teach on spiritual formation. Were you all there? Are you all there? Some of you are there. And all of you are doing assignments now. <laughs> oh, all the best. <laughs> um, it is an excellent session. 15 hours of spiritual formation telling us how to exercise, to keep fit. I give you that 15 hours in two minutes. Vim, vision, intent, means. There are three elements that we look at when we come to spiritual formation. One is vision. Knowing exactly what you want to do with your life and making the change so that your life will be profitable. Second one is an intent. The act, we actualize the intention to being trained. And the final one is the means. How are we going to get that done? You know, many runners have a good dream. <laughs> many people have good dreams. But unless we train, we cannot achieve our dream. How do we become a marathon runner? Fast and pray? No. No. Fasting and pray doesn't make you a marathon runner. Oh, faster. Fast and pray, very powerful. But it doesn't make you a marathon runner. Because all of us have been fasting and praying, isn't it? Right? 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 This afternoon, we do a 40-kilometer, 40 42-kilometer run. How many of us will make it? None. Except those in the PA room. Because they have been running every day, Pativan especially. <laughs> but besides him and a few others, 
it is we have to train the means of getting there is very important. We need to train. And the areas to train is our will, our thought, our feelings. We have to train our feelings as well. And our bodily tendencies and inclinations and our social relationship. And that was that was what Dallas Willard talked about. That is the two minutes summary of 15 hours. Okay, so if you want to listen, uh, you get somebody else to give you the 15 hours. <laughs> huh? It's awesome. Awesome. How do you become a dentist? And whether we trust a dentist, how do you become a dentist? You look into somebody's, you assist a dentist and you look into somebody's mouth for the last 20 years. You say, ah, I can do it. I become a dentist because I've seen how the dentists do it. So I know. First, you correct the lobang, bigger, <laughs> right? And then you fill it up. <laughs> and then he'll be all right. He can eat food. It looks very easy. How do you become a chairman? I think if I ask Jack, <laughs> thank you, Jack, uh, for, for helping us. Oh, yeah, Where, wherever you are. <laughs> Ayo, ayo, thank you, Francis. You know, if you ask Jack, the feeling of doing chairmanship on top and sitting back there is different, isn't it? You know, sometimes you think you know it, but unless you actually do it and train for it, you will never be able to do it. So if you tell me to go to a dentist who has been watching a dentist do it, and I open my mouth, and say, please do. I wouldn't trust. Because I think I will end up without teeth. <laughs> right? Huh? I need somebody who is trained in dentistry five years. Trained as a doctor six years. Go through all the rigorous uh, exams. And finally put a small DR in the front. That's the person I trust to open my mouth. Because you know why? I want to eat the next day. <laughs> no, we need to eat. So I cannot afford to go to a dentist who is not trained. And you cannot afford to listen to a preacher who is not trained. We need the skills. And we need the talent. And not everyone can do it. And so we need to train ourselves spiritually to do whatever. Third area is follow the rules. Very easy. All runners follow rules, right? <laughs> we have a whole set of rules. But what is, if you are a runner for Jesus, what are the rules? Ten Commandments. No, obsolete rules. We don't follow that because there is a higher value now. Jesus said, I come to give you a new commandment. Doesn't mean that he negate the old one, but he enhance it to give us a new one. And it's a simple one. The rule is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. So you turn to your neighbor now and say, I love you. <laughs> yeah, no. But that's the simplest part, isn't it? Then you turn the other side and say, I hate the fellow like actually. <laughs> I think sometimes uh, we, we it is summarized so well. It's not a rule anymore. It's a relationship. Loving God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength is not a rule. It's a relationship. And so, same. The scripture says, similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. And the rule is very simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. And you can do it very well. Even on your own time, you sit down, you can do it. Driving in your car, you can do it. You can love the Lord anytime. And by showing love, to a friend and neighbor, you are loving the Lord. And that's how we practice as a believer. Follow the rules, simple rule. I thought, wow, this is 
Good point. Good preaching. Carry on. <laughs> Next one. Keep on track. I got two more points. Keep on track. I think this is the toughest point. Keeping on track. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. God has marked out this race for us. Marked out for us. Looking to Jesus, verse 2, the founder and perfecter of our faith. So he marks out for us a track. And then we look to Jesus as our final destination. And, and that's where running happens. And so often it becomes the hardest because I, 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 I came to know the Lord at 13 years old. So I've been a believer for more than 40 years. And the hardest is keeping on track. Really, that's the hardest. Like any marathon runner, you know, they run on the track. All they need is to step over one foot over to the other fuller track. You know, it's disqualified. That's all. He can finish the race first, but he doesn't get the crown because he didn't follow that rule and he didn't keep on track. And I think we need to, it's quite sobering to know that, you know, it's a long journey. We are not doing 100 meter dash. We are doing marathons for Jesus. And there are so many things that can keep us off. We need to aim straight and the narrow course. Many things, we, many people start well, and we do that. We start well. When we come to know the Lord, everything is exciting. We have said, Jesus, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, everybody claps. Wow, oh, exciting. Water baptism, everybody claps. Wow, oh, exciting. Then after that, the trouble starts. It's hard to live as a believer because the standards are very high. And as you, the more you read the Bible, the higher the standard that's required. It doesn't mean you don't read. Huh? <laughs> okay? But that's the way it is. God wants us to improve. <laughs> the, the more you run your 100 meters, the faster you become. Isn't it? I mean, you can do it. I can do it in 25 seconds. You can do 25 seconds, 100 meters. You also can do. But you know, to improve from 25 to 10, <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. And I think that's the way the Bible is written. Simple to the simple, tough to the tough. And there's always a challenge left behind for us. And so it gets exciting for those who like excitement and tough walks. The Bible is the best. Don't give up. Many issues in our life will cloud us. Money could be one. Sex could be another one. Power could be another one. Pride could be another one. So many things that can derail us. But the scripture says, keep our hearts pure and look to Jesus. Keep on track. Don't change course. And finally, <coughs> finish well. The scripture says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. You know this scripture, every time I hear, is at a funeral. <laughs> huh? Huh? They like to preach this message. Eh? Oh, this guy who is in the coffin. Has fought a good fight. He has finished the race. Yeah, he finished. Uh, he's finished the race. <laughs> he's finished the race. But we want to hear it when we are alive. How else can we change that destiny unless we are alive? To in order for us to finish that race properly, we need to hear it now, not when we are dead. <laughs> right? Then we can finish. The poor fellow finished already. <laughs> Cannot even change their destiny. But we can. We can. You can. I can. Because we want that to be our achievement. That we have fought a good fight. We have run this race ever since I was 13 years old. 
coming to know Jesus. And up to 100 years old, I'm still running. A bit slower, but still running. And that's the way. And that's the excitement, isn't it? Don't we all want to finish? To hear what the Lord says to us, well done, good and faithful. Wow. We are so blessed if we can get that words coming out of the Lord to us. Well done, good and faithful. If Jesus tells us, I'm pleased with you, you know his, rec his, his description of his son, he says, and this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Wow. If that was the same uh, comment he says of me, says of you, a son, a daughter, that he is well pleased. You'll be the happiest person on earth. God telling you that. Wow. It's worth, it's worth it. Our medal on sports day is three ringgit fifty cent. I bought two hundred and sixteen of them. So I think all of you will get one. <laughs> huh? You think so? I think all by the by the by the sheer statistics, <laughs> either that or one of you have won too many, okay? And you need to return some, <laughs> okay? But it's so cheap. So when it comes to the sports, this year we don't have golf, so cannot under declare the score. But got badminton this afternoon. So if the ball is out, say out, don't say in. Okay? It's not worth it. It's 350 only. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. The difference between gold and silver and bronze, all same price. <laughs> what matters is our spiritual walk with the Lord. That matters. And it is out. Be a graceful loser and say, out la, out. <laughs> okay? Can? Can? So this afternoon got games. Hari Raya got games. And we finally finished with go-kart. And I've enrolled into go-kart. Haven't sat in a go-kart before. But I've, I'm, I'm going to sit. I'm going to put a reverse gear and try and go forward. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, we, we <laughs> so join us, okay, have fun with us, because in an excellent time that we can build bonds and fulfill that second commandment of the Lord, love the Lord with all our hearts and love your neighbor as yourself, love them, okay? <laughs> when you lose your futsal, don't, don't injure them, okay? <laughs> I didn't buy public liability. <laughs> I just have uh, games for games fun sake, okay? So love your friend, love each other. See you later on the uh, futsal court, badminton court, the go-kart racetrack. And for you who don't have a sport, next year we will have mahjong. We, we, they, you know the leaders, the leaders, <laughs> the leaders tried to, tried to vote in Mahjong. <laughs> wow, amazing, my leaders. What's the Mahjong, Mahjong? Oh, <laughs> they didn't even ask for chess. They asked for Mahjong. <laughs> but I think it takes a lot of skill to win, isn't it? Huh? It takes a lot of skill <laughs> to win. I look at, I can't even recognize the, the pictures. How to play. It takes a lot of skill. But you know, if we do it creatively for the fun of it and have friendship building, what's the problem? What's the problem? It's only when we make soccer a vice and bet on it. Even soccer can be a problem. <laughs> okay? Just enjoy the week. Enjoy it together. Amen? Those, why don't we stand up? I'll pray for you. I call the
worship team to come when we are close. Can we sing song number one? I like that one. The opening song, the closing song. Uh, but uh, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Why don't you stand to your feet? Pray for all of you. Because we're going to have a wonderful time and let sports be something that will teach us character. Honesty. Uh, call a out, out. Call a in, in. Don't fight over shots. Don't kill each other. <laughs> okay? And let's do it unto the Lord. Amen? Be a runner for Jesus. How fast you run, how slow you run, actually it doesn't really matter. As long as you're running forward and not backward. Let's do the pace that we can do. If I can do that pace, let us do it. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is a good God to us. And if you do not know Him today, join us. Come run with us. All of us are on the track running. Come run with us. Receive Him into your heart and He will be a big and mighty Savior to all of us. Any non-believers here who want to come to know Jesus, you can just lift up your hands very quickly and put it down. I can pray for you. Do not know Jesus and say, I want to, I want to run after this kind of God. This God that can walk with me each day, can run with me each day, can understand me, and is a very practical God. If you do not know Jesus, this is your opportunity. Anyone? Anyone? Just quickly up your hand and down, I pray for you. Take it that all of us know the Lord, believers in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this morning, this afternoon. That, Lord, you have given us such a clear illustration of how we can walk and run for Jesus. And Lord, even in your Bible, you have spoken about runners in the Lord, keeping their eyes glued to you. Wanting to finish well and keep on track. And so, Father, help us do it each day. Lord, we sometimes we stumble and fall. But Lord, pick us up gently.